time for another pop date with Mumbles and Mr. Dancer. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pop Date. On today's episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pop Date, I'm bringing you some training methods that you should avoid. So six methods that you should not do when teaching your dog. We're going to jump straight into that right now. I've done a lot of videos on things that you should do, where you should take your dog to go to the vet, what you should do during fireworks, what you should do during this, what you should do during that. But guys, today for our pup date, I wanted to bring you guys some things that you should not use when training your dog. We've all seen these products around and seen these ways of doing things, and they're really not very good things to do. So today I've compiled a list that I'm going to bring you guys of things you should not do when training your dog. So let's jump straight into this. The first thing is physical correction. Pulling on a leash, hitting your dog, shaking your dog. This does not help to correct your dog at all. If anything, it can make them more aggressive if you strike or pull on your dog's leash. Guys, don't do it. It is bad. Do not do it. So guys, my second tip is do not use any kind of collar correction thing. So that includes things such as shock collars, prong collars, choke chains. Clicker collars, I'm going to put those into this one too, even though they're not as bad as the other ones. Those kind of collars are bad for your dogs because they cause physical pain. They can cause your dog to have problems breathing. And they can even cause death in a dog if you do not use them properly. Do not use collar corrections. It can actually make your dog more aggressive in the long run if you do not use them right. And it can also make your dog more defensive. They'll be doing things out of the fact that they don't want to be hurt rather than that they know that they should not do something. It's a bad way to train your dog. Don't do it. Now, the third thing that I'm going to mention is dominance methods. Some people claim that you should look your dog in the eye or roll them over on their stomach, look them straight in the eye and tell them, hmm, I am your dominant. And guys, it has been proven over time that this doesn't really work, first off. And second off, shoving them and things like that, it's just a bad thing to do. Your dog could get defensive on you and it could be a bad situation all around. So... Dominant methods, do not use them when training your dog. They usually don't work. My fourth thing is excessive isolation. Now, granted, guys, I have used with Dancer some gentle, very quick timeouts at times, mainly to remove him from the situation. For example, if he goes and he rips something up or, or if he had an accident in the house, I'll remove him and I'll stick him in his crate for, you know, five or ten minutes while I clean it up. Then I'll let him out. But, guys, if you do excessive isolation, all it does is give your dog more social problems. They become stressed out. They don't understand why they're in there for so long. A dog's brain works weird. So guys, do not use excessive isolation as a punishment. Sure, if you want to give your dog five minutes, you know, take them away from that stimuli that they're barking at so they can settle down, that's understandable. But do not keep them in there for 30, 40 minutes. It just doesn't work. Guys, the fifth thing that I want to talk about is exposing your dog to stimuli, also known as flooding your dog. Now, guys, some people feel that if you introduce your dog to a stimuli, such as the noise of fireworks, and you continue to do it over and over again, eventually your dog will not be afraid of it. There is some truth to that, but guys, the thing is, is that this is seen as a very inhumane action because before they build up any kind of tolerance or anything like that, they're scared. They want to get away from it. They, they're not, they're being forced to stay in this position that they would not be kept in if it wasn't for you continuously introducing them to that stimuli so guys on flooding and on introducing stimuli to your thing to your dog do not do it let me put it in simple terms for you guys let's say you're scared of snakes okay you're scared of snakes you find them frightening you don't want to be anywhere near them now let's say you're forced every week on monday to be locked in a room full of snakes how would you feel about that you wouldn't feel good would it eventually break you of your fear of snakes? Maybe, or maybe you just become to the realization that you hate Mondays and you're not gonna get out of bed and you're not gonna go anywhere because you don't wanna be locked in a room. See what I mean? There's two ways of looking at flooding a dog or overstimulating them. It could be, yes, they maybe became immune to whatever it is, or it could just be that they've developed another fear to stay away from that stimuli. So you really don't wanna use this one. Now my sixth and final tip is guys, yelling. Yes, it is good to correct your dog and sternly tell them, hey, don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Put that away. Do this. Do that. It is good to use terms that they understand. But when your dog does something wrong and you excessively yell at them, 
for hours on end. They don't understand why you're yelling. They don't get it. They don't understand it. Remember, a dog is not born speaking English, so they don't understand everything that you're saying. They can understand keywords, they can learn keywords, but they don't understand that you told them that they're a bad dog because they went here and they did this and they did that and no other dog would do that. And why would they do such a thing? And why would they do something like that? And then you're telling them all this stuff. They don't understand it. All they see is that their, that their master or human is upset and they don't understand why. They don't know if it has something to do with what they did. They don't know what's causing it. And it can, can actually be, make them become defensive. They can think something's hurting their human. They don't want that. So... Guys, do not use excessive yelling when when correcting your dog. What the proper way to do it is have a word that equals bad. So when they do something wrong, when they do something bad, our keyword for dancer is wrong. And when we say that, we say it very sternly. We say it a couple times so he gets the message, and then we leave it. We drop it. We we're friends again. There's no hard feelings, no matter what he's done. That's the way to do it. Do not continuously yell at your dog. Now I know sometimes your dog can frustrate you. You can just want to, but guys, you got to remember, they're just a dog. Walk away, calm down, don't yell. So guys, this has been six tips that you should avoid when training your dog. I hope this helps you guys. I always want to help dogs. And you know, one way that I've been trying to do this is by bringing you guys these tip videos of things that I've learned over the years so that hopefully you can learn them and do things the proper way. So guys, I hope this helped you guys. And now I'm going to go get dancers so that we can finish up this video. So guys, now as with every week, we're going to bring you guys our pop in play. We get to see the cute little dancer have all sorts of fun. And here he is. Anyways, guys, this has been another episode of Mumbles of Dancer Pop Dates. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Please smack that subscribe button, smack the like button, smack all those buttons. Dancer and I are going to go take a little nap because little dude's tired. Anyways, guys, we're going to be Mumbles of Dancer signing off. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.